first two points are very simple and every company has these, but I think in a remote environment, these things really need to be a part of everything you do. Um, and the first is a mission statement. So not only creating a, a simple documentation that answers the existential, who are we, why are we here, what are we doing, questions of working with the company that, that you've created or that you're joining, but um, incorporating these into every piece of documentation that you have and into every conversation that you have with coworkers and conversation that you have with clients. Um, these, these are the things that make us a brand. Within a remote environment, the only thing that we have is the concept of our brand from inside and the concept of our brand externally. So to really communicate these succinctly, um, when you're speaking with other employees, when you're uh, creating documentation, really things down to make it cohesive so that everyone on board understands what they're there for. And um, I, was, I was actually thinking about this, and it seems like within remote environments, um, the things that can cause problems is when there's a dissonance between what the company sees itself as and what other people see the company as externally and externally. So really creating a mission statement and allowing that to be the foundation for everything you do um, is incredibly important. And history. You know, I, I started this out uh, letting you know a little bit about us. If I told you we're 80 people and we work around the world to do 168,000 client tickets, that's, that's something that tells you <clears throat> but it, nothing gets you on board with a company as much as a history does. To tell, tell people, here's where we came from, um, here's where we're going. You know, the mission statement and the history to me really work together. It just adds depth to, to everything you do and allows people who are coming to your brand with no concept of who you are to really understand what you're about. Um, and teamwork, <laughs> another simple word, but I've seen people, um, you know, bosses, trainers, interact with people uh, who are coming into their company, specifically really passionate uh, bosses and trainers, and they want to, to be on board with the individual as they start out and really be with them through every point in the process. But for me, when an individual com comes on board, you know, I've done quite a bit of training. When an individual comes on board, this is our, our testing ground. This allows us to really get people working together so that when they're uh, dealing with clients, when they're out in the, the real world, you know, the things get busy, things break. Um, they have these contacts within the company can allow them to um, know, know where they're going, know, know who they need to communicate with. And that brings us to the human element. Um, most remote workforces have some sense of fun, but sometimes it's really hard to cultivate that. And sometimes it's difficult to understand where fun has a place and where it doesn't. But when people come on board, you know, both clients and um, <laughs> <laughs> both clients and uh, employees, having that fun internally allows them to communicate that externally as well. Um, of yes. Sakuri is, is very big on this. Being able to say yes to individuals that, uh, you know, want to on take things on for your brand is, for me, an answer to the equation, um, can I do this? Is it beneficial to the company? And uh, is there room for this? So saying yes to things that may be unexpected is a way to let employees feel empowered and really give them, uh, really give them ownership of the tasks that they're undertaking. Uh, failure is a possibility, certainly, but failure is a fast track to success in a lot of cases. You can learn what's what's working, what isn't working, and what's better. Um, and all of these things to me lead into the concept of accountability within a global workforce. Everyone needs to feel. Like this is their, this is their brand. This is the thing that they need to do. <laughs> this is, <laughs> this is their company, and everything that they're doing for your company is they're accountable for in full. And that leads us into flow. Once you have everyone in place and you have this culture set up, everyone's communicating uh, your brand to the world successfully. How do we eliminate the noise in the things that we're doing? How do we eliminate the, the communications that we're having that don't need to occur, that things messy? You know, if you're a group of starlings, that communication needs to be very succinct so that you're uh, making maneuvers, so that you're doing things in a way that, that uh, allows you to make quick changes in an environment because things are going to go wrong. You know, everything's going to change. Growth is going to change things significantly. So scalability, adaptability, and really making your workflows concise from the get-go is going to help you grow over time. 
Um, <laughs> I, I actually had someone come into chat <coughs> not long ago and tell me that they were going to uh, DDoS or attack our website if I didn't send them two dollars via PayPal. <laughs> and obviously this isn't something that happens every single day, but this is something that could happen. This is something that might happen once a year. You know, people make ridiculous requests. So for us to have a workflow in place, if it happens, document it. If it could happen, document it. Um, allow employees to know where these things are so that when they come on board, they can find these items for themselves. Um, they're going to have team members that they can communicate with, certainly, and they need to know who those people are and that they can go to them for help, especially as you're adding people who you know, maybe, maybe encountering situations that they've never come into contact with. Um, and that leads into resources. Workflow is certainly a resource, but having a wide range of resources, both from the client perspective and the employee perspective, lets everyone be self-reliant. And that really, these next two points for me, workflow, or sorry, resources and reasons, really elevate the conversations that you're going to have. So instead of an, a client coming to me with, you know, the question, do you have a firewall? Which I'm totally happy to answer. <laughs> we'll, we'll answer any questions you might have as a client, but we can, they can read our documentation and say, well, I know they have a firewall, and come to me instead and say, I have configuration A, B, C, and D. Will this work with X? And I can say yes. And that's a really simple conversation. We've eliminated a lot of the noise in that conversation, made it quite concise. Um, and secondary to that is reasons. When I'm training, uh, we get 140 questions asked 167 different ways in the course of a week. So for me to be able to tell someone who's, who's new to the company, um, here's how we do it. Here's why we do it that way. Uh, here, here's why we can't do it. These are the reasons why. They're going to be able to come to me with more elevated questions around. Um, and again, that really eliminates the noise. As, as we've grown you know, from a team of 30 people or three people to 80 people, really eliminating these unnecessary conversations has been key in success. I like to have conversations every day that are either fun or necessary. Uh, and anything else is really not something that we, we need to be doing. And that leads us into prioritization. Things are going to get busy. Things are going to get crazy. You know, it happens. We're all working in, in our own roles, in our own locations. And for each individual on our team to be able to be a triage specialist and use the mission statement, use the, you know, the, their sense of the culture to really identify what's important is going to allow them to make choices about what can be done right away, should be done right away, and what can be done later if things you know, if, if need be. Um, efficiency. And when I talk about efficiency, I'm not just talking about doing a task quickly, uh, which is certainly important. <laughs> you know, everyone wants to, for everything to be done quickly. But um, efficiency when considering implementing new processes. How, how are you going to go about this? Is this the most effective way that you can do this? A, a complex task as a, is likely to be done poorly or not at all. I, I've currently worked in sales to create our, our sales procedures with our management team, and we didn't have a sales procedure before. We had support-facing staff who also worked with sales, but they didn't have any process for this. And creating all these documents for, for noting data, um, for you know, writing down, not writing, but documenting the kinds of clients who are coming to us, what, what they were buying, but we were doing it across multiple sheets, multiple different locations. So when we went in to transfer this to a new location, which was much more efficient, um, much better suited to our, our current stance in that uh, process, we had to go through and check everything because we had all these multiple points and there were definitely inconsistencies. So considering the efficiency of a process before you implement it or as you're implementing it, will really avoid work down the line. Individualization. So you have the perfect team, and they all know what they're about, and they're working together effectively to execute your, your, your tasks daily um, in a really cohesive way, a really agile way. How do we value the individual, and why does that matter? Now, it's a really simple question. You know, everyone wants to be valued. Everyone wants to feel like they, they belong in the company, in the culture. But there is a value as, a, as an organization as well. Clients, 
Now, <laughs> I don't know, this might look a little bit different for me than it does for the majority of you. Our clients come to us with all experience levels. They may know what FTP is, they may not. Um, they may own their own server or you know, be, a, be a hosting agent. They may not know where to log into WP Admin. It, it really ranges. But b allowing a client to come to you with the experience level that they have, interact with your brand in the way that makes them feel comfortable, makes them feel like a person, <laughs> clearly. And as a person, they're more likely to refer more people to your brand if you're able to open up the process to whatever their skill level is. Um, from an employee perspective, I've done a lot of uh, interviewing for Sequoia over the last And one question I always ask people is, what do you want in a company? What, what do you want? Um, and they always tell me, in some form or another, <clears throat> I really want to work for a company that sees me as a person. Um, and everyone wants to work with an organization that values what they do. And they want to be able to, to apply those skills to this organization in a way that makes them feel successful as a part of that company. But the upside for an organization that's utilizing these things is that many viewpoints within a remote environment gives you many sources of feedback. As an individual, no matter what your position is in the company, you're not going to be able to make all of the interactions that every member of your team is making. Um, each support-facing staff member interacts with many, many clients each day that you're not able to, to interact with. They interact with each other in ways that you're not able to interact with them. So each one of these uh, opportunities for individualization is an opportunity for unique feedback. They're going to be able to come to you with um, a range of, of viewpoints that you wouldn't able have, uh, sorry, ever have been able to consider before. So we have people working together. We have the, f the flow in place. Everything is, is lean and concise. What do we do with the data that we're collecting about what we're doing? Um, as I said earlier, within a remote environment, all we are is our brand and our reputation. And the, the feedback that we get lets us know whether we're doing things right or whether we're doing things wrong. Um, <laughs> make it feedback is something that someone is giving you because they want to work with your company more effectively whether it's in a client or an employee, um, making it painless, you, creating a, a meeting, even asking an employee, how's it going today? Or what's working for you? What's not working? Um, with clients, often we get these surveys that are about 15 minutes long, and uh, nobody wants to complete those. So for us, we have you know, an, an email, on chat, on tickets, very simple feedback systems, so that we can collect a range of data. Um, Alicia had a wonderful, uh, talk on at Google SEO rankings, uh, rankings? yeah, and uh, uh, collecting data in every point that you can is really going to allow you to get a picture of your company that you may not need to use right now. Um, the data that you're collecting might not be relevant at all to what you're doing right now, but as you grow, this data may be highly effective in the future in letting you make choices about what you can do. Um, considering the dark matter, every <laughs> Every point of data that you're collecting is telling you s what you're connecting with. Um, but every point of data that you're not collecting is telling you what opportunities you have. So we, we began collecting information on what industries we were interacting with. And there were actually some, prize, some surprises in terms of what industries we weren't interacting with. Because we thought that we might be reaching more you know, school organizations, or we might be reaching more uh, hosting agencies in, in specific ways. And we weren't. So this lets us kind of look out based on the data we're collecting and see what, what opportunities we have in terms of what we could be reaching that we're not. Um, make it known when it counts. <laughs> this is uh, one that works for both clients and employees, certainly. But when I get newcomers on board on chat, are starting to interact with clients, and we have that feedback system, and they are able to see when feedback comes in. So when they get their first chat that's five stars, you know, they're ecstatic and they virtually come running to me and say, look at this. Look at, I got my first five star chat. And I can say, yes, that's amazing. You, you did this really well, you did that really well. This, maybe we could do better. Um, but it gives employees an opportunity to evaluate themselves, which in a digital workforce can be a little bit tricky because everyone's working from different places. Um, we're working 
often in a, a fast-paced environment, so we don't have a lot of time to sit down and say, you know, how am I doing? Uh, what 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 matter? So feedback is a great way to really allow employees to evaluate their own work. Granted, they don't come back to me with the chats that are not doing so well, but they probably review those for themselves. Well, I'm certain that they review those for themselves. And that opens up a line of communication for us to review things together as well. Um, from the client perspective, <laughs> we get, I, I, I was thinking about feedback from the client perspective, and <laughs> it really is an opportunity to reinforce their personal connection with your brand. They're coming to you with feedback because they feel that they want to interact with your company. You're the company they chose. Um, and they may have negative feedback, positive feedback, but feedback is an opportunity for you to say, I, I recognize your opinions. I, the, the one thing that I was relating this to specifically is we collect malware samples, which is a form of feedback. You know, people go out in the world and they find these samples. And often, they'll bring them to us and uh, say, you know, I found this for you. This is, this is really exciting. Um, and it may or may not be something that's relevant to our work at all, but for us to say, for us to say, um, thank you, you know, that's that's amazing. You found this and you brought it to us. Thank you very much, because they're they're actually equating our brand to malware specifically. So anytime they go out in the world and you know, here someone has a, an infected site or um, have the in opportunity to interact with the subject matter that we deal with, um, we're in reinforcing their connection to that subject matter by appreciating their feedback. Adaptability. This is my, my doom and gloom slide, as I said. Uh, something will go wrong. Something always goes wrong. As you're growing, uh, things are going to break. Things are going to fall apart. Things are going to explode in new and impressive ways. Uh, how do we consider the things that we haven't found uh, broken yet? And how do we account for that in a way that's going more adaptable and more agile in the ways that we adjust to those problems. Testing. For this uh, point specifically, we are very, very rigorous on testing. For you, it'll probably look quite different. But finding the holes in your systems, whether those are security holes, um, whether they're potential leakage, whatever it might be, finding those holes before someone else does or before it becomes an issue is going to allow you to, to make a plan B and account for that. Even if you're just adding that to your workflow and saying, if this happens, you can do A. Um, Cross-training. People get sick. <laughs> uh, the internet, there are natural disasters. Things, things can be a problem for us. So simply having multiple individuals within different departments that can do the same job is really going to allow you to adapt again to the changes that, that might come up that you haven't accounted for yet. Backups and redundancies secure backups and redundancies. Um, we, we have backup servers, certainly. We, we have all kinds of backups. But what are the systems that you're using? What's the information that you're using? How might that fail you? Uh, considering ways that you might plan for that and create a backup of your documentation or a backup system, have that in place, have that ready, how can we you know, be prepared to switch something else if that becomes necessary? Um, and this all leads into a proactive versus a reactive stance, which is probably the thing I'm going to say that is closest to Sakuri's, you know, heart of, of applications. Um, really considering your environment and being able to not only account for what the things that you're doing and, and growth in a stable way, but account for the things that might go wrong. And that all leads us into growth. You know, you have this great cohesive team, an amazing culture, Everyone's working well together. Um, everything's functioning well. You're, you're collecting feedback and, and analyzing ways to improve. Growth is going to happen. If your product or service is something that the market needs, growth is going to occur. So how do we do that? Oh, this is overlapping a bit. How do we do that responsibly? Um, every gap is an opportunity. And if this is something that you can extol to every employee within your organization, you're going to have a number of employees evaluating the potential for growth in minuscule ways every day in a way that really reinforces that internal structure. Um, you can have you know, great goals and ambitions, but if that internal structure isn't sound and isn't improved upon in, as you grow, as you look for new ways to expand into your market, well, there, there may be problems. <laughs> um, responsible disclosure. The question of can we do it? How should we do it? 
um, and who, who needs to know right now is very important to me as, as we grow. There are a lot of things that we might consider, but really slimming it down, eliminating the noise in, um, in, in those advancement processes is going to allow you to, to grow without the, the downfalls of disappointment or um, you know, frustration as people find out that these things aren't possible. Using feedback, really simple concept. How can we, how can we use the feedback to, to evaluate our realistic goals and, and determine whether or not those are possible? Promote from within, and this is one of my favorite things to discuss because it's something that I've seen happen time and time again. As we scaled up, uh, leaders emerge within teams. It becomes clear that someone is, is really in a uh, space to, to lead a, a group of people. And when that's something that is required, when a title is required, allowing them to just move into that title organically is fantastic. Um, and nobody is an expert. This is another thing that's very central to Sequarium. The concept that if you encounter a problem and the answer is, I don't know, if you gloss over that and provide an answer, you've missed an opportunity for growth, both as an individual and as a team. Um, everything we do in a remote organization depends on how forward thinking our team members really are every single day. So for everyone to be able to consider the gaps um, and, and oh, sorry, to consider the, the, yeah, the gaps in the things that you're aware of, the things that you're not aware of, and to really fill those in uh, one by one in every single instance, every single contact is gonna allow you to grow successfully. Um, hiring for the future. I'm really excited about. We're at a point right now where we're growing in ways that we don't really even anticipate. Um, we, we have, you know, definitely hopes. We, we have guidelines. We have uh, things in place. But we're hiring individuals that have skills that we aren't utilizing yet, but that we can utilize, <coughs> excuse me, in our market. So choosing individuals that have a range of skills and allowing them again to move into those positions that you have available as they open up, as your, as your team grows and changes, is really going to allow you to um, adapt and grow organically. So that's actually all I have for you here. Uh, are there any questions at all? <laughs>